Good morning, and welcome to Historic Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall. Originally established as Fort Whipple in 1863 and changed to Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall in 2009, its main purpose was the fortification in the defense of Washington. Since its inception, Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall has been the home of horse cavalry, artillery, and infantry. Today, it is home to the Old Guard, the United States Army Band, and the United States Army Garrison. Before today's review begins, the United States Army Band, Pershing's Own, presents a pre-ceremonial concert featuring the following musical selections, Americans We and This Is My Country.
Once again, good morning and welcome. Today, the United States Army Military District of Washington, represented by the soldiers of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, and the United States Army Band, Pershing's Own, pay a special tribute to several soldiers who are retiring after many years of distinguished service to the United States Army and our nation. Participating in today's ceremony, from left to right, is the United States Army Band, Pershing's Own, formed in 1922 by then Army Chief of Staff, General John J. Pershing. The United States Army Band is the premier band of our senior service. Pershing's Own provides musical support for ceremonies and special events in our nation's capital and throughout the United States. The United States Army Band is under the direction of Captain Richard Viglucci and led by Drum Major Rob Moore. Elements of the Old Guard include Bravo Company, commanded by Captain Alfredo Lugo, and led by First Sergeant Nathan Brookshire. Next on line is Headquarters and Headquarters Company, commanded by First Lieutenant Timothy Clark, and led by Sergeant First Class Stephen Teal. Since the days of the American Revolution, the colors have been one of the most important elements of a military unit. Therefore, in the center of our formation and bearing the national color is the nation's foremost color team, the 3rd Infantry's Continental Color Guard, led by Sergeant Orozco. Next on line is Honor Guard Company, commanded by 1st Lieutenant Logan Davis, and led by Sergeant First Class Justin Verbarnsey. Following is the Commander-in-Chief's Guard, patterned after the unit created by General George Washington in 1776 to be his personal guard. The Commander-in-Chief's Guard is commanded by Captain Brandon Fisher and led by Staff Sergeant Timothy Garris. Next on line is 4th Battalion Headquarters and Headquarters Company, commanded by 1st Lieutenant Benjamin Grice and led by Sergeant First Class Sean Sweeney. The last element to your left, dressed in the Continental Musician's uniform, is the United States Army Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps. During the American Revolution, musicians wore the reverse color of their parent infantry unit. The men and women of the United States Army Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps maintain this tradition by wearing red coats instead of the infantry blue. The Corps is led today by Drum Major John Parks. Ladies and gentlemen, moving into position is the commander of troops for today's ceremony, Lieutenant Colonel Richard A. Towner, Commander, 1st Battalion, 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard. The history of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment reflects the growth and development of our nation. 52 well-earned campaign streamers, 2 Valorous Unit Awards, 5 Meritorious Unit Commendations, and 5 Superior Unit Awards attest to the Old Guard's record of bravery in action and achievement during peacetime. Ladies and gentlemen, taking the reviewing stand are the hosts for today's retirement ceremony. Major General Omar J. Jones, Commanding General, United States Army Military District of Washington, and Command Sergeant Major Edwin T. Brooks, Command Sergeant Major, 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard. Order! Order! 
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the advancing of the colors and remain standing for the United States National Anthem. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Jones and Command Sergeant Major Brooks are taking their position to honor today's retirees. Headquarters Department of the Army, Special Orders. By order of the Secretary of the Army, the following soldiers of the Department of the Army are retired. Colonel Eric E. Bailey, Medical Services. <laughs> Colonel Derek C. Cooper, Medical Services. Colonel Harry A. Huckleborn, Infantry. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Blair J. Sawyer, Infantry. <laughs> Major Hung N. Liu, Signal Corps. Command Sergeant Major Todd V. Jackson, Engineer.
Sergeant Major David J. Lee, Signal Corps. First Sergeant Matthew D. Clissold, Ordinance. Sergeant First Class Alan R. Galizia, Quartermaster. Staff Sergeant Hosea McCurdy, Jr., Engineer. We are proud to recognize these soldiers' devotion to our country, and we wish them happiness and prosperity in their well-earned retirement. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, Major General Jones will now present the flag of the United States of America to Command Sergeant Major Brooks in recognition of his 31 years of time-honored service to the United States Army and our nation. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the posting of the colors. Post the colors. Staff, right, face. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Jones. What a great morning to be a soldier. Uh, thank you all for being here. Fellow General Officers, Command Sergeants Major, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and most importantly, our retirees, and your families. On behalf of our 40th Chief of Staff of the United States Army, General James C. McConville, welcome to today's Department of the Army Retirement Ceremony. Thank you all for joining us, and thank you for sharing this ceremony with this amazing group of Americans to my front. 
I truly wish everybody could be here in person today and share this ceremony. But these are unique times, unique for the world, unique for the country, and unique for our Army. But they're also special times, and this is a special ceremony. Special for you all, our retirees, special for your families, and special for the entire United States Army. Everyone, whether you're here in person or out watching online, you honor these retirees and you honor their families with your presence, both in person and virtually. I'd like to start by recognizing the outstanding soldiers of the Old Guard and the United States Army Band, Pershing Zone to your front. These great soldiers represent the professionalism and the dedication of our entire Army, over one million soldiers in uniform today, and make this ceremony, just like every single thing they do, memorable. Also, I want to take a moment today. I, I get an opportunity to host this ceremony each month, and every single one is special. Every single retiree is special. But on a personal note, to be able to be part of Command Sergeant Major Edwin Brooks' retirement today makes it special. Not only did we serve together over the past year and a half, while well, he's been the Command Sergeant Major for the Old Guard, the senior list leader for all the soldiers here to the front. But we found out we also started Ranger School together on a very cold January morning in 1993, which I think dates us both a little bit. Um, but Sergeant Major, I just want to thank you for your 30 plus years of service, your 30 plus years of leadership. Congratulate you and wish you the very best as a soldier for life going forward. Thank you very much. For the next few minutes, I'm going to talk a little bit about selfless service. It's one of our values as, a, as the Army, and it's something that 10 of you have personified your entire careers. In fact, this group of retiring leaders represents 213 years of selfless service to our nation, and collectively, you all represent almost 20 years of combat experience. As selfless servants, you have spent the last 20 years, and in some cases, 30 years, putting the welfare of the nation, the welfare of the Army, and the welfare of your subordinates before your own. To the American public, you're simply soldiers, but to us, your family, bound by a common thread of duty, honor, and country. During the span of their careers, these professionals did everything our nation asked and more, from fighting and deterring enemies, to training soldiers for combat, to deploying overseas, often multiple times and you achieved remarkable success in everything you did. For the families, I know you are proud of each and every one of these soldiers retiring today, and I can assure you that their soldiers, their peers, their leaders, and all Americans share that pride with you. The journalist Tom Brokaw coined the phrase, the greatest generation. He was referring to the men and women who grew up during the Great Depression and went on to fight and win the Second World War. He wrote, quote, these men and women fought not for fame and recognition, but because it was the right thing to do, unquote. And like Mr. Brokaw's greatest generation, you 10, you also served selflessly, not for fame or recognition, but simply because it was the right thing to do. You served, and in many cases fought, in places like Kuwait, the Balkans, Iraq, Afghanistan. You trained in the hills of Korea, the deserts of California, the swamps of Louisiana, and the snow-covered fields of Europe, all while sacrificing time with your families. And your service and the Army's commitment to our nation continues today as soldiers just like you, serving around the world, protecting this nation, and serving around the country, helping us protect the American people from this pandemic. When you ask retiring soldiers why, why they do what they did, they look down at their shoes, avoid eye contact, and humbly respond, I just wanted to serve my country. I just wanted to make a difference. And what a difference each and every one of you made. You kept our country safe during some extremely challenging times. And your uniforms, your uniforms tell your story. The ribbons, the badges, the patches reflect the service, skills, assignments over the years. And the golden stripes on the right sleeves reflect the combat tours of duty. Their uniforms tell the story of an Army profession, of battles fought and won, of overseas missions to aid those in need, and of valor and sacrifice. But for every ribbon, every badge, every combat stripe, there's a story that's not told, 
the story of families who served alongside each and every one of you, who shared in your sacrifices, and who provided you all and all of our soldiers the support, the strength, and the courage to accomplish what our nation asked. Our families truly are the strength of our soldiers. So on behalf of our nation, I thank the families for your unwavering support to our soldiers in our Army. Please join me in a round of applause for all Army families. And to you all, the soldiers retiring today, I congratulate you on a job well done, on a remarkable career. You stood guard and maintained the eternal vigilance which has kept this country free for 245 years. And I'm honored to have served alongside each and every one of you. You've distinguished yourselves during a career of dedicated service to our nation, and you don't want to hear this today at your retirement ceremony, but your work's not over. You're professional problem solvers and professional team builders, and you exemplify the American spirit of getting things done and taking care of people. As you enter the retiree roles, know that you're a soldier for life. And though you won't be in uniform anymore, I have no doubt you'll continue to lead by example, both in your communities and continue to serve our nation. As a retired soldier, you will also be a symbol of our Army and what it means to serve. You will always be an ambassador for our Army, and I encourage you to also be an advocate for our Army, to encourage America's finest sons and daughters to follow in your footsteps, to follow your example, and to don the cloth of our nation. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Army leadership, and on behalf of a grateful nation, thank you, each and every one of you, for your incredible selfless service. God bless you, God bless your families, and God bless the United States of America. I wish you the very best moving forward. Army strong. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the Army Song.
The United States Army is honored to have presented today's special ceremony. As you exit, please continue to follow all social distancing guidelines. Thank you for attending and enjoy the rest of your day.